Divine Truth Spirit Experiences Discussions Experiences of people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of the second part of the personal experience from spirit is Steward and Spirits Who Study Jesus and Mary, during which Mary channels Stuart, a behavioral scientist who has been studying Jesus since Jesus was eight years old and who was offended two weeks earlier by Jesus' comments and has worked through his original emotional response and now has a conversation with Jesus about science, human behavior, and Jesus' condition. The session was recorded on the 20th of March, 2018, from 11.50 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. And I suppose this is what I'm uh, putting forward to you from a, as a scientist's perspective, that there are often methods of inquiry and analysis that are available to us, even in our current condition, mm. that we do not even think of engaging because of our prior experience. So what I'm suggesting is you've always been able to ask one of me mm. <laughs> to come to you and explain something, mm. but have never thought to do so because of prior experience. Uh, an experience that maybe it's not even possible, like it, it would be one of those experiences. And and what I'm trying uh, to... Yes, yeah, certainly. I did not... Uh, I didn't think to do it. Exactly. And, and, and we often don't think to do things for a number of reasons. Last week or two weeks ago, you had the reason of not doing it, which was more emotional, like more mm. to do with injury. Mm. Um, what I'm trying to probably illustrate this week is it's more to do with um, awareness of possibility. The two factors, yes, I see. You see, there's, yes. and the, the two are sort of in a way separate to each other, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yes. One way is, is obviously something from our prior experience influencing our choices and decisions. Mm. The other way is something that's uh, influencing us sort of invisibly in a way, influencing us. Mm but causing us to not think as laterally or as, or as widely as we could. Yes, mm. and uh, this is, um, I, I attempt, and this is why perhaps our last discussion was very challenging for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do attempt to remain positive from the condition that I am in, mm -hmm. but I, I am well aware from the, the changes that I have already made in this existence that certain possibilities do not occur to oneself until other changes have been made, what you would call progression mm. uh, has been made. And at times I feel very frustrated about that. Mm -hmm. um, but I suppose, I, 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 I suppose you're positing that um, basically I can be aware of more potentials that that are not uh, and it's not as uh, conditional on my growth and development as I have previously thought. Yes, Is that correct? yes, and and perhaps I can give you an illustration from from my own experience. Mm -hmm. What I what I have found is, um, and 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 this is going to. Um, it, it's important. I feel to. Uh, well, perhaps what I'll do is I'll just say what I'm, again, I'm not trying to offend you in any way. But. You know, look, I think we've moved beyond a certain <laughs> okay. point where I, I feel, um, yeah, I, I feel more relaxed in our discussion today because, as I mentioned at the beginning, I, I have mm. become aware of certain elements within myself. And as I think that I've demonstrated during our discussion today, I'm attempting to be more um, cognizant of those things. Yep. And no, 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 I get that. That's really good. Yeah. And you would be aware that Mary and I have been having discussions about the conscience. Yes. Um, which we've defined basically as a mechanism within the human soul that allows for direct communication between God and the human. Mm. And what I have personally found is that independent of condition, as, uh, if you're open to that mechanism, you're able to receive potentiality uh, information, you could say, the, of your future potentials, even mm. though your condition doesn't match those potentials. Mm. And this is what I see as one major advantage 
to having a relationship with God compared to not having one. Hmm. Do you follow me? I, I do. And I do, I do see that, um, you know, I, until, until our discussions, you know, I've, I've very much wished to remain dispassionate about the subject of God. Mm -hmm. You know, I've wished to um, gather evidence um, before exploring this situation with God. And, mm -hmm. and I, it is becoming uh, sort of more apparent to me that I'm going to have to reassess that approach. Uh, and I and I'm also aware that I have, um, you know, as, as now that I've decided that I must analyse myself more with more scrutiny. Yes, uh, yeah. I, I, yes, I can discern there's certain elements from my earth life surrounding the subject of God. Was still your, fa within your father me. was a religious man? I gather. Um, not overly, yeah. not overly. In fact, I, what I would say is, <laughs> yes, he had certain, um, as I mentioned in our previous discussion, we were, uh, there was a level of religious custom in our lifestyle yeah. that was observed, yeah. but I, I feel that both of my parents felt very dispassionate about God. Yeah. And, and as one is educated in the sciences, what I've come to sort of analyse more within myself is that because I've had um, this situation with my father where I felt that he was constantly attempting to make me look stupid or un, un, uh, unqualified or... Mm -hmm is that um, then as one is educated in the sciences, there's certainly a strong um, emphasis on evidence and there's a lot of um, a lot of feeling that there's no discernible evidence for God. And so therefore, mm. so, so I, I, I guess what I'm attempting to point out is that I've associated any kind of exploration or belief in God or emotional uh, experience experience relating to God as, as somehow exposing me to further potential of being uh, exposed or, or being accused of being um, uh, lesser uh, as a scientist. Does that, have so, I expressed uh, that clearly? Yeah, it's difficult yeah, and, for me and, to express this Yes, and certainly on things. Earth, most scientists would have to agree with you. <laughs> if, uh, yes, you know, they, if they, many uh, of my colleagues. Uh, but, but perhaps because I haven't really <laughs> analysed motivation as strongly uh, as, as I now see as possible. Um, mm. I, sp I suppose, though, what I'm getting at here with that, introducing this into the conversation with mm. you, is that... Um, uh, well, you and I both know that the the, the human, uh, if we can call it the human way of scientific endeavour, is to analyse what you observe and then make sometimes I guesses. Though really, mm. <laughs> as you've now can see, you, you sometimes make guesses as to the correlations, and then and then you try to measure that and see whether it supports the growing amount of evidence that comes out with a conclusion in the end. Mm. It's a it's a very sort of slow process in, in and it has to be. And by nature, laborious, because it does require the correlation of lots of data, mm. and it, and it, did, it does take quite a lot of time. And, and uh, um, you know, if you, uh, as you know, as a scientist, but people on Earth may not know, you know, because many of them are not scientists, don't realise how much of a person's a scientist's life is put into this process. Of mm. documenta documenting co-relative co and, and, and yeah, other the, sort the of data forms of data. The data is essential, yes. Yeah, and um, I suppose what's helped me a lot, though, in terms of my own endeavour to find what, what is the answer to problems and, and, the, and also the answer to future uh, potentials, is by, by recognising that there was the potentiality of a creator... Mm. And therefore, the potentiality that that creator could communicate. Mm. This helped me become open to the fact that I could then hear what the creator was trying to communicate. Before then, because I was not, I was closed to the potentiality of a creator, and closed, uh, you know. And I don't know if I was really very close to it, but mm. um, even in my first century life. But 
Um, once you become open to the potentiality of a creator and the potentiality and the most probable likelihood, in fact, if, if we can communicate and we're a, we're a creation of the creator, it would make sense that the creator could communicate. Mm. It then uh, occurred to me, as, as in my scientific endeavour, mm -hmm. if you like, to create experiments regarding communication with such creator mm -hmm. to determine what would happen in, you know, what, what are my potentials and what are the potentials of investigation. And what this did for me was it helped me open myself up to this, to two mechanisms, one uh, of the soul, uh, which I now know to be true and uh, uh, and which the two forms that I had appear to you, to other parts of myself, would also know to be true. And that is that there's this one mechanism, which is the method that the Creator has to just give you information. Mm -hmm. um, not not uh, emotional. It's not, um, it's not emotional information per se. It's just information about anything, mm -hmm. anything you would care to ask. And how much that has the ability to open your mind to the to an awareness that is beyond your current condition mm. do you follow me yes so that's number one the second thing that occurred to me during this uh, analysis shall i call it which is really what it was for me yeah was the the fact that love could exist in as a potential in the human meant that such love must exist in the creator yes and then i through the mechanism of the conscience became aware that the creator wished to share that love with me mm. and then what that caused me to do was to engage in some experiments as to how um, such sharing of love could uh, could could be engaged yes and what that did for me was it immediately improved my condition which then immediately meant that I could assimilate more information through the mechanism of the conscience and actually understand it, actually grasp it, which then immediately meant that I could receive more of that love, which improved my condition further, which then immediately meant that I could assimilate more intellectual knowledge from the Creator. Yes. And what this did for me was instead of now being limited by the what is classified as the human scientific process i basically now called this god's scientific process mm. do you understand i think so. i'm basically mm. suggesting that god created a scientific process that that um you could now come accelerates, to measure. that, that yes. accelerates yes. the process of investigation, discovery, and final, uh, final discovery of truth. Hmm. And that's what attracted me to it. Uh, so really, I could uh, approach it as a, a source of new hypotheses, which I then investigate. Correct. That's what I'm yes. suggesting. Yes. No, and I, I feel I actually feel quite... Um, Yes, I feel this is a pivotal moment in my, uh, I feel in that I now, while I'm thinking about many things, about how I may change uh, what it is that I'm doing and how I'm approach. No, I can't say it's a change in approach. Not really. Uh, just that there's, uh, I do see, um, <sighs> how can I say this, that there's potentials of, if I, if I even have an hypothesis, hypothesis uh, involving God that I now may able, be able to harness some of these things that you're speaking of and I may in fact be able to do, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, mm. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like there's far too many possibilities to actually to convey actually right now. To actually the yes. conversation, really. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> um, when you think about it, well, yeah. that just those two things sort of expand the possibilities almost infinitely, don't they, in terms of our investigations? But certainly, and I now have a strong feeling of how I might approach, you know, if I can establish in a measurable way the existence of God and... I can. I, I have a number of um, different ways that I can see. I could now approach that, mm. and the measurement also 
in my own spiritual body and in others who may wish to engage with these experiments that I'm now thinking of. You can also measure that, can't I you? I can measure that. Mm -hmm. uh, then I can use that evidence to further investigate other things that you've been speaking of. That's it. Uh, and if I can establish this communication of the conscience, then I will be able to, it's like a source of inspiration almost or new hypotheses which yes. I can then work on to gain evidence of. And that is quite interesting to me. Yes. Mm. Yeah, this is what I found very interesting. Mm. Um, and uh, it, it still fascinates me, to be honest. It, it's, mm. uh, it's, it's my primary fascination, as you know, um, because, it, it, because it, it's a fast way to gather truthful information that would otherwise be very difficult to gather. Mm. And, uh, and, and also, you will find in the future progression, get you get to the point intellectually where you, where unless this process is engaged, you can't even gather it. Mm. <laughs> like a, like there's a limit to how much the mind or the brain of the spirit body is capable of absorbing without this uh, tra transformation, if you like, of the soul that mm. needs to occur in order to understand. I, and, I, yes, and I, well, really, I can see that. Uh, <sighs> it's very sort of humbling, this entire experience, but I can see that these uh, issues that I've had surrounding God and, uh, you know, I probably now I would call them emotional issues, but... Um, <laughs> Reluctantly. <laughs> yes. Surrounding this God problem that I encountered, which I now see the roots of in the relationship with my father mm -hmm. uh, and the interaction that I then had with the scientific method and scientific uh, world, mm -hmm. uh, have caused this kind of resistance to God. And yet now I can see that um, if I engage God as a, a legitimate hypothesis, exactly. that I can actually gain evidence, which is not dis in. It's not the it's, same. It's exactly it's the same way you've been from gathering evidence. the scientific process. <laughs> exactly. In fact, it's, it's in fact it's it just an addition to it, it, isn't it? Really? Yes. It's yes. like. It's basically saying, well, let, I, I know the scientific process really well because you've had many, yes. many years of it. How many years have you been engaging the scientific process from a human perspective? Like, oh, well, I, since I was 15, really. When yeah, I so what, to, what year was that? Can you I can't recall? I can recall. Um, I, no, it was a long time. Yeah. It's a long time. Uh, it was in the 19th early 20th century somewhere yeah, yes yeah, yeah you've had obviously uh, almost a century really that yes. i've been engaged in science and developing a, a passionate love for science really yeah I and i understand say. why it's, it's a fashion it's all fascinating yes. <laughs> all, and every, every every area of scientific endeavor not just behavioral sciences but every yes. area of scientific endeavor is is well, fascinating i <laughs> think i fell in love with the principle of science or the the, the methodology of science really the the, yep. the idea of evidence and proof yeah. and it was it, sometimes i felt quite um uh, sort of annoyed with myself that I had entered this field of uh, inquiry into human behaviour because often I found it difficult to quantify. Whereas, uh, you know, other yeah. colleagues who are in just physics, physics or, or you know, chemistry, or it was much more easy to quantify yeah. uh, the interactions and equations and so on. And hmm. um, but, but I, I do have a deep passion for that side of it as well mm. yeah and, I, I, and I mean, for the for the methodology yes know, for the, for the, for the scientific gathering of methodology. evidence and yep. data and measurement yeah and and also in the behavioral science part area uh, field. Uh, seemingly yes because yeah, yeah, i have continued it because yeah. you've continued it yes. for some time yes. and so this isn't really is it a, a change of method it's no. just it's just adding another another bow to the method and you might finish up finding out this bow might be a major bow, mm, <laughs> you know what mm, I mean, to the method. Mm. But it's, it's like adding another facet to the method uh, rather than sort of changing the method. And, and this is what I'm trying to encourage scientists to do mm. is, to stop, is to stop closing down completely to the uh, concept of God, but rather treat the concept of God as a scientific 
process, a, mm. sci a, sci a scientific process of discovery, uh, just as you would treat every other process of discovery, you know. Yes, I, I, I already, you know, I have many thoughts about this, that uh, clearly the problem for scientists um, is that each must have their own particular um, situation, just as I have begun to uncover, mm -hmm. in terms of resistance to God. And, and when I think about it logically, uh, it seems that, you know, if God does exist, uh, which is something that I can now hypothesize and work to gain evidence for, but if God does exist, uh, given how few people actually, from what I observe, mm -hmm. have a very strong um, belief mm -hmm. in God, mm -hmm. then it, it makes logical sense that each person must have their own personal situation, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is causing them to not even hypothesize about God, just as was exposed in myself. Yep. Yeah. Spot on. And, uh, and this is where we, where we see, like I was saying before, those two areas of limitation. The first mm. area being this area of just complete emotional distance from even the potential mm. of something being true. Mm. So that that's, you could call that a closed mindedness, I suppose, in a way, couldn't you? Yes. But, but it's not really mindedness. It's more closed because of some kind of emotional, usually it's some kind of emotional trauma that causes this closed mindedness, you know? Yes, and it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, uh, you know, as we spoke, I think I spoke about this in my first discussion with you, you know, as members of this council and or whatever you wish to call it. Mm, you know, and there's language. a lot more scientists with you right now in the discussion than there is, <laughs> than just the 20 years so of you, isn't there? Yes, yes, you certainly. You can see yes. around us now, there's yes. like hundreds of thousands of them now, but. Sorry, that'd be yes. a bit of digression. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, you were saying about... Uh, yes, that's right. I was saying about the... Um, you know, certainly we've almost, as I mentioned in our first discussion, we've prided ourselves really on being open to all ideas. Mm. Um, it, you know, even this idea that you are a returned person and... You've been open enough too to examine. <laughs> to, to examine that, <laughs> exactly. that, that, that could be possible, you know. Mm. We haven't necessarily placed much emphasis on your identity as someone who is closely associated with God. We're just more <laughs> interested yep. in this idea of the returned person and the qualities of the returned person. Yes. And it's interesting that we ourselves have felt that we are very, very open-minded and in fact, encouraged a culture amongst the group of being receptive to all new ideas. Mm. Um, but I find it fascinating just in my reflections as we're discussing these matters that um, uh, because I had associated my, it's, it's a fascinating kind of a concertino that I, it's difficult to, again, it's described very succinctly, but uh, I have immediate emotional awarenesses happening of how I have um, ascribed a lot of uh, personal worth to my identity as a scientist and then mm -hmm. I have uh, married my worth and identity as a scientist with almost a... Um, a disbelief in God. If that's a very, um, I'm see, summarizing that very vastly. Or, I could, or, there's a lot of in intricacies, but that's how because yeah. I've built this this worth around uh, uh, identity as a scientist, and then uh, contingent on that, I've felt that I must not believe in God. I, I have yeah. I have excluded a lot of things. Uh, um, unwittingly, even yes. though I have prided yes. myself on yes. open-mindedness, yes. there's a limit to the mind's openness based upon what we make contingent on other beliefs. It's again, it's very, it's a highly yes. complex thing. That it is I'm, a highly complex uh, thing. Uh, that I, I'm, but it's great uh, that you're could, having these awarenesses. Yes. And this is this is something I'd like to, uh, you know, for people on Earth to have awareness about too, because obviously it, was, it would change markedly mm. the areas of investigation but, but you can see so on this one side of things there's and let's call them past historical emotional experiences which have uh, determined our life as we are right now and these particular experiences have to a degree they close down our mind they close down our 
Yes, I suppose what I'm wishing to, uh, what I'm reflecting upon is mm-hmm. the way that um, certain past emotional experiences, it's, it's, it's one thing to sort of observe one's life and say, okay, there was a, an emotional experience there, and one there, and there, there. Yep. but there's, a, there's a, an intricacy to the way that we then associate certain um, Beliefs. beliefs based on the experiences mm-hmm. with other um, ideas based on our identity and how we um, uh, fix uh, certain levels of worth mm-hmm. uh, to what we see as our identity. Uh, it's too complex to explain, yes. but it's not just a simple matter of uh, at some point we must uh this this is what i mean about the the self analysis now i understand as a very important part of my validity as a scientist mm-hmm. uh necessity it's for, necessity. Me, to, you for me to do good work is to have a, a, a much m- more nuanced approach to my self-analysis in that i must understand the relationship between current beliefs and past uh, events mm-hmm. uh, but it's it, this this relationship is not necessarily obvious because there's a lot of other things that have been within a person's uh, personality and their nature and their decisions and choices and belief systems mm-hmm. that have been built around and on top and influenced by these uh, past experiences that is not necessarily obvious one ends up with a certain state and a limitation to the state because they don't see the obvious correlation yep. between what occurred and what they believe. Mm. Yeah. And and the this issue of personal the the uh, importance attached to certain uh, seeing yourself with a certain identity or a certain profession and a certain uh, worth associated with uh, who you are in society and who you are, how you appear and uh, to others, and and also your profession or your mm. occupation. Or oh, it, it's it, I could speak for many hours now mm. about what I now observe, but it's mm. difficult given the limitation of speaking slowly right now. <laughs> yes, I understand. Um, but you're dead right. Like all of what you're saying is dead right. There's, so there's this wonderful thing that coming to that awareness does, which which basically says, right, I've got a way of opening my mind further as long as, number one, I do deal with what are these intricate web mm. of emotional experiences that have happened throughout my life and how they have influenced my ability to accurately assess a situation. Yeah. Yes. Right. So that's one side of it. The other side of it, and and let's assume we had none of that for a moment. Mm. The other side of it is, how would I know what potentially I might be able to examine? Mm. That's the other side of it. And to my mind, um, that's also a fascinating subject in itself, mm. where where we've got now. Okay the potential of what I may be able to discover in the future, how do I know what I don't know about that? Mm. <laughs> how do I understand that what it is I don't know? Yes, and, yes. and, and um, clearly um, the first set of factors... Mm-hmm. The emotional factors, shall we call them? Yes, and yep. the interplay yep. that uh, happens The belief there, systems. Uh, that of affects what I what I think of and consider and what I might hypothesize certainly of course it does but I am very aware now that I feel like I've opened up somewhat to this um, potentiality of God yeah. that you are also highlighting this uh, potential of engaging with the conscience to elucidate to me uh, further possibilities that I may not present to me on my own, given my the intricate personal background, or just because I just, don't my know. development <laughs> limits that yeah, at this just point. Just because we don't know. <laughs> like, yes. And, uh, and that's what I'm saying is that, it, and if you consider for a moment too, that if there was a loving God, he would look at how you can deal with both potentialities, mm, mm. Um, not just 
oh, you know, fix up all your own problems and then and then how do you still discover, you still need to discover the truth. <laughs> you know, after that, how do you discover it? It, it, it would not, not make sense that first you fix up all your emotion problems and then you're left in this place where you still have to engage this slow scientific method to discover things, even though somebody who knows more than you do could tell you. Yes. Um, you know, obviously it's a lot faster to go to somebody who knows more than you do and just say, is this a possibility? And they go, yeah investigate it you know and you say well how do i investigate it and they go well if you do this and do that you might be able to investigate it and it would be a lot simpler <laughs> you know yes. what i mean rather than looking at the infinite possibilities of what you need to investigate and then deciding oh how much of my life is going to be used doing that mm, mm. so so that's what i find fascinating about the scientific parts of god if you like the mm. the the way the way god's put the universe together and the way he's put the human soul together to enable us to have that kind of growth that's uh, that's not limited by things that we just did on earth mm. really or things we learnt on earth as in the basis and then had to further discover through our through our history even after we've passed mm. Mm. I, I thank you for engaging with me mm. yeah it's been a very good discussion now i feel mm. you've been pretty open to the discussion and and you can see how even given historical you know, hurts and so forth, an openness to a discussion that uh, is still possible, mm. even though those hurts remain. Well, um, and the, I feel the irony is for myself that my great love affair with the scientific method, mm -hmm. uh, even though I was challenged uh, in our prior discussion and at certain, point, uh, at certain points in this one as well, certainly, mm. But it, it, the challenge in our initial discussion, uh, because I was uh, in my heart, if you like to say, the scientific method resides very strongly. I, even after that challenge, I was able to draw on elements of that, uh, what I love the most, that mm. science, to analyze what had occurred. And it, it has helped me a great deal mm. um, to even now become open to what, I understand now you're attempting to show me in our first discussion. Yeah, that's it. Mm. And, and, and my, I feel too, if you imagine for a moment that every scientist currently on Earth had this awareness, yes. um, how different uh, the form, you know, you, you've already seen through your own experience the forms of possibilities of discussion that, and, and investigation that could be happening on Earth that aren't. Yes. And uh, you imagine if this was, uh, if, scientists open in this way, how much things scientifically would change on Earth even um, in terms of the forms of endeavour that occur on Earth and the effect that would then have on society at large. Mm. Um, it, it would be quite a, a, an amazing, I feel, and quite significantly ex exhilarating, <laughs> uh, amazing experience. Mm. Uh, on earth now instead of it being a still a quite a laborious you know people on earth often say oh things are changing so far scientifically and, and when i look at it i go no they're not yet you know they, they they're not yet they're, they're not yet because of these problems mm. these two these two what i see as two quite large problems and and now there's i mean i'm very interested also in the differences between um the earth-based existence and the spirit-based existence mm -hmm. and what um you know the factors that i observe within the this is another discussion perhaps but the, the factors i observe within the spiritual body um how much they influence the earth-based existence i mean mm. i don't know how to explain this it's it's as if um in the earth-based existence it's almost as if the inf the factors i see in the spiritual body have more impact upon the physical existence that that once a person uh is no longer connected to that physical body the the exact same elements exist but there does seem to be an ability to move through these or to of the change awareness. these yeah. yes a lot more rapidly there and is. so i feel that this is why science on earth is it feels almost in a chokehold really it, 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 yes. it, it's very very uh uh rudimentary is the best way i could say it yes um, and and at times it feels sort of frustrated. I did try at certain times to influence scientists upon the earth, mm -hmm. even to make them aware. Mm -hmm. 
of the spiritual body because mm-hmm. obviously that's what I was studying. Uh, um, but it, it's it's uh, it's so trying. <laughs> yes, that uh, it becomes very frustrating, doesn't mm. it? I've, I've been in a position of trying to influence people on earth as a spirit, and it, it can be can be inven- immensely mm. frustrating. Mm. That's one of the reasons why <laughs> I decided to come back and and mm. uh, and and do it face to face. But um, the yeah, what, what you're saying is also very important in the in that um, if if the the scientists of the spirit world had the ability to uh, because of the open you know those two areas that we've discussed mm. the the emotional area of your history and also this openness to the concepts you know that that are beyond your current understanding and your current belief systems and. Um, if those two things were happening on Earth already, you could see that many scientists like yourself could easily influence scientists certainly into new forms of investigation. Yes, mm. you're saying that the the scientists in the, who's solely in, inhabiting the spirit, spirit body, world, yep. in the spirit in this living in the spirit world, yep. could more even easily influence the scientist who was at least aware and willing to. Uh, work with those two factors that you spoke of yes and also understand that he's able to communicate with spirits of the spirit world who can tell him do this do that and try this and try that you know but uh, (laughs) and i'm interested in your opinion on this because Mm -hmm. this uh, and it sort of follows on from what i was saying earlier is that you know i can i can imagine now um the the first discussion we had so it's a fortnight of your time ago Mm -hmm. uh where i became quite challenged Mm -hmm. So it took me a fortnight of your time Mm -hmm. to really, uh, I feel, you know, I made it. you made a, a shift, shift a a significant, significant shift shift uh, on on the issue, and yeah. I feel I'm able to. And I because at the f- beginning you were potentially never going to see us again, right? And that you imagine we would never have had this conversation. It, it, the, my point exactly, mm. yes. And um, I also feel uh, in that period of time there's a difference in my demeanour. Even I, I feel mm-hmm. it. You yes. know, there's a change in me. Yes. Um, and so now we've engaged this conversation, which is highly enjoyable. Mm. Uh, but when I consider myself, even with the same condition of the spiritual body, mm-hmm. but attached to a physical body, mm-hmm. and I had that conversation with you while I was in my spiritual body. So everything else from a spiritual perspective is the same, mm-hmm. and yet I am in a physical form with the same spiritual mm-hmm. condition, if you like. Mm-hmm. What, uh, you know, my hypothesis is, it's very difficult to measure this because obviously one is either with a physical body or without one, you know, but there are certain (laughs) correlations that we can make through a comparison of spiritual bodies. But Mm -hmm. the current hypothesis I have is that, uh, so we had this scenario that actually occurred Mm -hmm. and that that period of time. Um, if I was to, in in line with my current hypothesis, mm-hmm. uh, basically, uh, the if it was me in my physical form, I would not have made the same shifts in such a sh- in the fortnight period of time. In fact, what I observe I- in similar um, situations. comparable situations. Yep. Uh, is that it can take a person up to 50 years mm. uh, while attached to a physical form to make the change that I made within a fortnight period. But there's uh, good but, reasons for that. Uh, uh, which are, what are they? Well, one is that well, after you pass, you're now aware you're a spirit. <laughs> and obviously that automatically goes, okay, I never believed that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, as a scientist on Earth, did you believe you would ever be a spirit? It, uh, no, but... I don't understand. That's a belief in in having a spirit body, but I'm speaking about the resistance to change specifically, not necessarily about sp- yeah, spiritual but, beliefs. No, but it, but it does have an impact, is what it, I'm saying. In, in what way? Well, as soon as I'm now aware of something I never believed in, but now it is now how I am. Yes. That automatically forces me to consider that perhaps there's a lot of other things that I have always believed but are now potentially not true. And that uh, uh, one tiny opening can cause a huge difference in the person. 
But but if I observe, say in my my own life, and mm -hmm. it's easily to to observe, it's still occurring on Earth, though perhaps less so than in, in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Um, there are significant like new innovations and discoveries made upon Earth that open people th to things that they previously thought mm -hmm. were not possible. Mm -hmm. So why doesn't that affect them? In the, why is it distinct? I disagree with your hypothesis, I suppose. The reason why sure. people are not is because faith, and this is where um, it's another, faith is an interesting quality in itself. And, and what you're really discussing is a matter of what I would call true, true scientific faith. True scientific faith is not imposed upon all areas of life. It's only imposed upon the physical when you're on Earth. So for most people when they're on Earth, they only have faith in something being true when they can see it, observe it, hear it, taste it, touch it. In other words, the physical body's senses, when they are wholly engaged in the truth of the matter, the person then says, oh, that is true. I now believe it's true. Right? Mm. Now, the problem with that is that there's whole aspects of humanity as you, discover, as you discover after you've passed, the spirit body being one of them, that that is not as easily measurable by the person on earth using their physical body as it is when you pass. So, so the person on earth is basically not applying what he's discovered in, in the physical, in other words, there is the potential of discovering new things in the physical, but he's not applying that to his emotional, his spiritual existence. He's only applying it to the physical. So you're saying that because our interaction, mm -hmm. uh, see, I'll explain from my perspective and yep, you can say away. what you think. So from my perspective in our interaction, we had an interaction. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. attributed motivations to you. Uh, and I became offended. Yes. I then went away because of my mm. passion for science. I thought, hey, let me, and because you had disagreed with me and because mm. Mary had attempted to discuss it with me in the interim also, mm -hmm. though I was quite resistive, mm -hmm. um, uh, that but it was really my love of the scientific process that caused me to return and analyse the evidence and the data and also, you know, think about other variables such as my own perception. I, you know, I considered that my own perception was perhaps fallible. Uh, are you saying that that is, you're saying that people never consider that their emotional perception is fallible on the earth? Very rarely, from what I've observed and surely from what you've observed, your behavioural scientists, you would have Well, I observed, observed that there's no change in behaviour. And very, and, yeah, yeah, very rarely is there. On Earth, very rarely is there any change of behaviour. Once it's established by the time of seven or eight years of age, it's very rare to see an established, a change of behaviour for the good um, after that point. And the main reason why is because of, well, there's many factors, as you would know, you know, some of them you would have measured, but, but I feel one of the main reasons why is that people um, continually put uh, on themselves... It, and perhaps the best way to illustrate this is let's compare, if you just step us through your process two weeks ago, and I will compare it with what a person on earth would have done in your shoes. And that, that will help everyone, including our listeners, to understand why there's a large difference between what happens in the spirit world and what happens on earth. Okay, certainly. And then we must close our discussion. Yeah, because Mary's because getting I can tired. Feel and, the, yes, yeah, and the, also the, the bladder's report. getting <laughs> quite full. <laughs> Uh, yes. Lessening, yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so um, uh, during our discussion. What was your original your feeling that you were being? Uh, uh, well, I, initially I was excited to speak with you. Yes. Uh, then uh, we, enga we reached a certain point in the discussion where I felt that you were trying to trick me. Or trying uh, to pull you down. You both. pull me down through the trick. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. Uh, and sort of <clears throat> expose areas where I felt that I knew that I was uh, limited in my knowledge. Yes. I felt you were trying to make a point of that when I felt that I was quite open to the to uh, uh, 
to the fact that I, there was knowledge that was beyond me. So, yes. so that happened and I felt very right, offended. Now. So I went away. All right. So now at this stage, we're very similar to what a person on earth would do. Exactly. This a is person what I on know. earth would probably go away, wouldn't he? He'd probably say, and get, feel get upset to and offended yes. and feel, yeah, that person's a bit of a bastard and off they go. Right. Mm. And that's probably what they would feel. Yes. OK, so here at this stage, we're similar. Now, what happened now? So I went away mm -hmm. and I found myself sort of uh, quite angry and overwhelmed by the anger. Uh, Which was in itself challenging because you'd never had that experience very much before. Oh, no, in the spirit world, I mean. No, that's correct. Right. That's correct. But I, I felt sort of out of control of my emotion, yes. which is, yes, I can see what you're saying. That, but, that but was another, very rare, even uh, that never occurred in yeah. my earth life, yes. But there's another thing inside of you that is, that is uh, really a fairly uh, rare thing, and that, I that is... Your love of, the, of science and the process of discovery is higher than your consideration of your own worth. Well, only just. Only just. That this experience. <laughs> I agree. Uh, I agree. I, you know, yeah, only just. It almost wasn't, mm -hmm. but it was. Yes. So your love of the scientific process, your love of the discovery of new truth, and my belief in the inherent value of that. Yes. Yes. Caused you to go, uh, maybe, maybe I have to give this more consideration. <laughs> yes, that's correct. I, so I felt, uh, you know, I, and, I, and as we analyse it, I can see some differences. I mean, I felt overwhelmed mm -hmm. and there was some, you know, I did allow that overwhelm for a period. So what would the average which, person on Earth yes, do? Yes, if I was on Earth, I would not have allowed that. It's okay. Um, they, they wouldn't even bother. They'd just say, that's a person bar, so I'm out of there. Forget about him. He, he's out of my life. Yeah, there is, there is a difference. Uh, it, it, that I have already measured, and that is that mm -hmm. the, the person in the earth body mm -hmm. is able to sort of throttle the emotional experience far more than the, the person in the spiritual body. Correct. Uh, even though I, you know, many of us in the spiritual body do attempt to throttle it, it, it is more difficult. Yes, it requires do, a higher effort. I do feel that there's, there's a correlation between the, the heightened... Um, the ability to, yes, the ability, this, the sensory abilities that we spoke of earlier mm -hmm. uh, that are different in the spiritual realms. Mm -hmm. And as I said, you know, they do, they become even more enhanced the more a spirit progresses. Mm -hmm. I definitely, you know, one of my sort of current, hypo, strong current hypotheses that, um, uh, is that the more the, the, the less one throttles one emotion one's emotional experience mm -hmm. the more heightened this the other senses so, so what you would commonly Correct. call sight hearing Correct. you know Certainly. smell they they are all heightened uh the yeah, less that's a great throttle. hypothesis you'll find out it's definitely true okay very good very good, very um, good. but, but um, so on earth what would happen See, normally so they would earth, throttle their yeah, emotional experience. And for some reason, the physical body enables that throttling a much... It's, it's like a heavy break that, that doesn't exist in it's the It's not spiritual. just the physical body. It's the beliefs that surround you in the physical, all the people that are around you okay. in the physical, the, the beliefs you have. But, but a lot of times the society you're living in too is already throttling theirs. So you're already feeling like you're going to have to throttle yours otherwise... So, so not only do you have to throttle your emotion, but you have to do it for a lot of different reasons. In the spirit world, one of the reasons isn't fear of everyone else. Mm. On earth, one of the reasons is fear of everyone else mm. and what they may do if you feel. Yeah, fascinating. Does that make sense? Yes, so, so I mean, I can, that, does, that's, that makes sense, but I'd never really yeah. sort of thought Whereas about it. Whereas in your it. location in the spirit world, you're not that frightened about what others may do if you have a feeling. Well, um, I, um, I, I need to consider that. You're more yes. frightened about your own <laughs> concept exactly. of yourself, but exactly. not so frightened about what others might do. You mm. know they can't physically harm you, mm -hmm. so that makes it uh, a bit easier to bear, right? Yes. Whereas on Earth, uh, you, there is the knowledge that you, they could physically harm you and even cause your death. Um, so that obviously has an impact upon how much you're willing to detune from your emotional condition. Does that make sense? Yes, and and I do I do notice now that we speak of it that mm -hmm. when I was on Earth, um, 
I was far, I, I was quite concerned with others' perceptions of me. Yes. Whereas now in this life, I'm more concerned with my own perceptions of myself. Correct. And, and maintaining them. And one of the reasons why that is, is because on earth, you would have had more fear about others' perceptions of you mm -hmm. and how it might impact your life. Mm -hmm. And once you arrive in the spirit world, that fear dissipates over a short period of time usually. Mm -hmm. And so you get to the stage where you're not so afraid of what, what others can do to you. And particularly in your condition where you're in the second sphere, or was it, or the second or third? Uh, uh, yes, it's sort um, of... I, 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 it's difficult to quantify, but top of second, lower yeah, third. Yeah. That's so in that, in that area, yes. by then you realise, oh, you know, all the people who are in darker conditions can't hurt me really at mm. all. So there's nothing mm. to worry about. Mm. And so, you know, naturally you're not worried about what you would be worried about if the same thing was happening to you on Earth. Yes. So that, that has a large bearing, but it's also the belief systems on Earth that have a large bearing on your ability to open up to new concepts that then the average person's, the average person in society's belief systems would actually contradict. And so, so you end up with, uh, if you raise your potential beliefs to this new level, not, not even just even believing it, just as an idea or a concept, you know, like a potential, mm. other people criticize that before you've even discovered anything. Mm. And so this is highly limiting. So really you, you're saying that when one is attached to a physical body, there's almost like a primal sort of a fear of being different from the pack and being, uh, being exposed to violence yes. uh, due to one's differences that yes. no longer exists here. Yes, and mm. you could say that that, uh, that is the soul's concept or the spirit, uh, you know, the spirit mind's concept of the physical existence. And not only that, most people, because they're now in this limited state, they have not got this communication coming to them saying, no, you actually have a spirit body and actually you don't need to worry about dying and all these kind of things. Most people on earth are very worried about dying, uh, particularly dying too soon or violently. And, um, and that has a severe impact on their desire to fit in with the crowd mm. rather than stand out of the crowd. And as you mm -hmm. know, people on earth who stand out of the crowd are the people most likely to die mm. or at least be attacked. Mm. Um, and so, it's, it's, yes, that's you know, bizarre. obviously that has a very large yeah. bearing on the matter too. Mm. So, so there are a lot of things going on at Earth in the yeah. moment, at yeah. the moment, that obviously do have a large bearing on how you would have responded if you're on Earth compared to how you respond when you're in the spirit. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay, mm. yeah, but, but that really answers my question. Yeah, but it, there are many factors in that, and and I'm sure as you discover, you you'll have a interesting time even discovering all those factors because there are many. Mm. Um, but that sort of illustrates some of the point, some of the reasons why a person on Earth, uh, even as a scientist, would close their mind mm. to a. It, it, so I, I find scientists generally more open-minded than most, but there are still the limitations of that experience. That, the, well, the, the, these mm. personal limitations, yes, that, mm. that, that I, you know, that we discussed earlier, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. So, so yes, the, the, uh, the less ability to throttle the emotional experience, the, the love of the principle which then guided me through and the faith uh, that there are things you don't know, you know, that everything's uh, not established because that's yes. been established through the transition. I see. So all of those factors mm. kind of compound to create more rapid change in anyone. I mean, everyone here changes more rapidly. More rapidly, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it's fantastic that God's designed it that way because otherwise the, the external limitations of the earth experience would forever influence you. Yes. And that would be terrible. Yes. You know, like, because as you know, like... <laughs> There are so many limitations of the, mm. on the Earth's experience mm. as as the humanity has decided them. So, do you feel that it's a? Because um, I'm very interested in this. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that it's a? Um, it's something that may never change. That it's it's a um, uh, it's a static limitation of the physical body of the the process of of first inhabiting both a 
a, a physical and a spiritual body and then making a transition to just being in a spiritual body. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that that limitation that the uh, physical body uh, represents, and I understand it's not the physical body itself, it's the other factors that mm-hmm. we were discussing, but that, that are unique to the physical existence. Mm-hmm. Can, can we assist people to overcome those things so that they do make more rapid changes in their behaviour. Yes. I mean, that's something that I'm very interested in. Yes, no, I believe believe that with all my heart. Otherwise, I would not have returned. Yes, I I would not have even returned. You you think about it logically. Why would a person who knows all these things return? Yes, why not just emphasise your work in the spiritual realms? Correct. Yes, why why return? That doesn't Why even bother returning if there was no chance or potential of of change? I would love to help you in this work Mm. because, I mean, obviously I'm fascinated by the behaviour and the correlation between behaviour and happiness. And, you know, I I would love to assist people to make the kind of changes that I made in a brief period Mm -hmm. uh, to make them more rapidly on earth. I mean, that would be very fulfilling for me. Yeah, and this is where I I feel having sort of regular conversations like Mm. we're having that are recorded that people can watch. Um, gives them uh, some opportunity to sort of start looking at their own, uh, you know, systems of, of belief, if you like, and how those particular beliefs are impacted upon their changes and their development. So, so this is why I feel it's a very, uh, you know, there are interesting possibilities when you marry someone on earth who's had the experience of these things through the spirit world with somebody in the spirit who's having the experience Mm-hmm. with information that can be given to people on earth about their current experience and why they're experiencing it like they are. Mm. And, and if you put all of that together, there's a, there's a, um, a large potential of change. And, and, and once it ga- gathers enough mass, enough people interested in it, yes, obviously you can see that potential for change can rapidly develop. Well, I can hmm. see that some of those primal fears uh, of, you know, uh, the exclusion from the pack and death Mm. as a result Mm. uh, would be um, diminished the more people came to uh, celebrate uh, uniqueness, I suppose, is a very simple way of saying it. Yes and celebrate change and celebrate uniqueness that continues beyond their physical life because the problem with it only being limited to physical life is most people on earth have this underlying feeling that what's the point of developing anything or discovering anything and doing all these fascinating things if at the end of 70 or 80 years i'm just going to die and i won't remember any of it and i'll be i'll I'll not exist you know and Mm. and so that also has a large bearing on people's desire for change and a desire for continual growth. Well, I, I do think that some people on Earth uh, see the correlation, uh, because I mean, I was quite involved in it on Earth, between behaviour and levels of happiness. Mm-hmm. And so there is a desire, I think, in many people in the Earth life to be happy. And so this causes some, uh, uh, for certain people, yes, some, some interest in the change of behaviour and that mm. having an inherent value, even if, even if you just get to be happy for 60 years and then die. But what I did encounter was this large resistance to change of behaviour, even in those who uh, could see that their current behaviour was creating unhappiness for themselves and others. I still observed a large struggle to change behaviour. And and when I came to the spirit life, I mean, it was quite... Uh, fascinating and exciting to see how rapidly changes in behaviour could occur. And the reality with your personal experience is it's not occurred as rapidly as it could have occurred. I, I, yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> as that's you can a, see from the last two weeks. Yeah. So, so. Well, I mean, uh, and now, based on our discussion today, I see there's this sort of a, a huge broadening of potentials of what I can discover, which no doubt will lead to more rapid change. And therefore greater happiness. Uh, uh, potentially, yes. Mm. I mean, I'm excited mm. to discover that. But, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's a fascinating. All of these areas of discussion are so fascinating. They and, are, yeah. And yes. probably what we need to uh, do is have a, uh, we'll have a discussion in our spirit state or something and and come up with a, series of discussions yes that uh that i'll somehow have to get to this physical uh, mind of mine and allow it to think about and um, 
and we could have a series of discussions that are more um, step by step, yes. um, you know, methodical, shall yes. we say, and that might help people to uh, understand and realise some of these changes that could happen and how they may, it may affect them. Mm. I would enjoy that greatly. I, yeah. I mean, and I thank you. I think it's t I must depart now. Yeah, yes. yeah. No, it's been lovely talking to you, Stuart. Yeah, yes. Thanks for your changes and, the, and your openness in the discussion this time. And I'm sure many of our, our listeners who have been listening would uh, have enjoyed our conversation, I think. Yeah, I feel a little <laughs> self-conscious about that, but I, you know, and a little, uh, you know, embarrassed about my level of exposure in these discussions. But I, I do thank you. It's been very, very yeah. enjoyable, especially the latter part of our discussion today. Yeah. I appreciate it. One thing it. that helps me is God sees everything anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, this is a whole area of discovery which I now must engage. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you yeah. again. And no worries. It's been our pleasure. Thank you. Mm. Hey, no, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was a good discussion. Hey. Yeah. Know. No, good discussion. Yeah. Uh, from what I recall of it. Yeah. yeah. It. Yeah. He. He had a lot of. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it was a very, very positive discussion. Mm. And uh, perhaps we need to just finish off because both of us need to go to the toilet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just, uh, yeah. So I'll just say to our, our audience, well, hopefully you enjoyed that discussion. Uh, I did, <laughs> so it doesn't matter so much if you didn't. But uh, um, obviously you can see that there's many things you might have learnt through that discussion. And uh, rather than discuss them all right now, because um, we need to, to leave you for a bit. <laughs> and, I hope you enjoyed it, and and I'd just like to thank my dear and beautiful person oh, uh, for her for her uh, time doing that because I know pleasure. it takes a lot of energy. Yeah, I just yeah. feel tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, darling. So hopefully you've enjoyed yourself uh, listening to this discussion, and we'll catch you later. Mm. Well, that was a pretty long discussion, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you did well with that, I thought. Yeah, yeah, it was... Uh, You're pretty tired after that. We needed to have our break and yeah. <laughs> go to the toilet and whatever. Yeah, I felt, mm. I felt pretty physically drained. And partly I think because I get um, a bit dehydrated and my spirit guides often have prompted me in the past, like when doing mediumship, like drink you more, need to more. be hydrated mm. to, to, to maintain a good connection. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, mm. I just got a bit dehydrated. But mm. um, I... It, it was interesting. I can't remember now everything Stuart said because I'm kind of... Well, two and a half hour discussion <laughs> is, uh, is a lot to remember. <laughs> but um, I remember sometimes I'm quite aware of what's being said in the moment and I felt there was a, just so many wonderful principles um, that he was sort of demonstrating yes. Yes. In, in his journey. Yes. And, uh, like, yeah, there were so many things, teachable things there, weren't there, yeah. like things to learn from. Yeah. yeah, and I, I, lo I loved the discussion. It was a very enjoyable discussion. That's good. And it was good to see him relax a bit more. And yeah. he was quite still quite self conscious at times, um, but um, I felt that. Yeah. He... But he'll relax with that over time, and that yeah. it'll be easier and easier to to you know have conversations. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of future conversations we may have, because because of his passion about. Um, helping people, well, not so much helping people at this stage, because, he, you know, as he said, he's not that interested in the people so much. <laughs> but that, that'll change quite significantly, I believe. Well, and, uh, yeah, and, but didn't he express <clears throat> at the end that he was quite passionate about change, helping ha people change on Earth or something? Yes, yeah. Which is ironic yeah. because he felt like, I'm not that interested in these people listening, but yeah. in fact, <laughs> he could probably help them by yeah. listen, just sharing his story. Yeah, yeah well... You know, I don't. I think a few weeks ago he would have said he's not that interested in people on Earth aside from what he can analyse. Yeah. Um, but I think the personal interest that he will have in people will change significantly over the coming months. But I felt like he went through a lot of changes even during the discussion. He did. He yeah. did. And uh, some of them he managed to maintain uh, his emotional consistency through uh, because he didn't want to leave the conversation to do yeah. it. There, there were a number of times when he could have probably left the conversation. There was a number um, of times actually when it was hard because I felt he was like backing out. You know, he he was like, when you came in the spirit form, he was just like, nah, I want to go now. 
Well, and he really wanted to cry, but he didn't want to. Admit yeah. He wanted to cry, so that's very evident so, a number of times. So he didn't yeah. do that. Plus, what happened there was that initially, I feel what happened was that. Um, well, can I, I say what I initially yeah, sure, experienced, sure. and then that's because um, uh, you had sort of introduced someone being there, and I felt the you, first person, the first person immediately, <coughs> that's you in a spirit form, and mm. then you introduced the second person, and I felt immediately that's me in a spirit form. That's right, it was. Yeah, mm. um, but then it altered. No, we morphed actually. Yeah. yeah, from one to the other because he he was really struggling with the second person being a woman. Right, and yeah. uh, and probably at that stage would have left the conversation. Um, so we quickly changed that. Yeah. So the second person happened to meet me again in just a, a different <laughs> form. <laughs> and the, there's another moment when he wanted to leave, which was, um, again, I can't remember exactly, but he was having some really big epiphanies about what had been blocking him off to the possibility of God. Mm. And uh, he was also Which was wonderful. Yeah, wasn't well, it? Like his analysis of that, very accurate. And uh, it, there's a lot more he could have said, but we were just, it was getting very tiring by that stage. But And he felt, he felt the, um, the uh, like, he felt there was an inadequacy that I had to convey what he was going through. He, he just was the the medium of doing it via mediumship was sort of frustrating is, for him at that it moment. It is difficult for a spirit yeah. who's trying to go through something while, well, it's, it's difficult for anybody to go yeah. through something while they're talking, right? Exactly. And then, <laughs> and, it, it, and anybody who's ever processed anything emotionally <laughs> properly would know that, yeah. right? So, so he had to either curtail what he was going through, or in order yeah. to stay present. And also, it was like he was having a kind of thing, and then he was like, "Oh, and how am I going to get you to say all that?" You know, <laughs> like you just because it <clears> happens so rapidly in the spirit form as well. That's yeah. right. So he was having a lot of thoughts that he would have liked to have said. But to say them would take too long, yeah. And uh, and so what he did is a bridge uh, gave us an abridged version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and mm. there was another funny moment near the end. Um, do, do you want to share that? Do you remember what I'm talking about? No. Um, where um, he was mid flow, really, really oh, engaged yes, that's right. with that's you. Right. Yeah. And you made a comment about all the other scientists that were now around him. We're now in the conversation. Yeah. There's quite a few scientists who joined us through the conversation. Our spirit friends in the celestial heavens actually uh, brought uh, large groups of scientists to the conversation during the conversation. And uh, so by the time we were getting near the end of the conversation, he was sort of bearing his feelings about things. But he didn't realise that there are hundreds of thousands of people listening to the conversation now. <laughs> and he, he was just so intent. Because <laughs> he was so intent on the conversation, yeah. which is lovely, because yeah. that's how it should be, you yeah. know. But he was so intent on the conversation, he didn't realise all these other people were there. And then when I said all these other people were there, he, he sort of looked up and looked around and said, so there are, and then he lost, uh, <laughs> he, he sort of lost what he had to he say lost at his that train point. of thought at that yeah. point, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what happened there. And so it took him a while to regather his yeah. thoughts because he was just like surprised that yeah. all these people, oh, yeah. <laughs> all these people were there. Yeah. yeah. But it, again, a, a very interesting conversation about um, how you perceive things as a spirit. Mm. Also, the differences between we, you know, we covered some good points about how you know it is like the progress on Earth, the, the temptation to leave situations. You know, we control our emotions by leaving situations it's much more difficult in the spirit world to do that mm -hmm. and also the sensitivity that a spirit is attuned yeah to feelings mm -hmm. so once you get rid of the body physical body you're more attuned to your spirit emotions because mm -hmm. your emotions can't come through from your soul to your spirit body first and you're more in tune with your spirit body emotions and your soul's emotions and as a result of that you're frequently in a place where um you're more sensitive yeah. to what to you, you you're more aware oh wow i'm feeling that now oh mm. wow i'm feeling that now whereas on earth you can distance yourself using many techniques yeah um the key on earth is to not distance yourself but as we also discussed mm. there's a lot of reasons why people on earth with those primal fears yeah um distance themselves from their emotions yeah and uh and if we can change the culture on earth yeah to be a culture where emotions are accepted mm. and encouraged and also uh, viewed as being able to be coped with. 
That's um, the that's the thing I think. You know, there's mm. a, there's certain cultures on earth where emotion is emotional display is accepted, but there's a feeling that the group must manage it rather than the individual. Mm. Uh, and you know, that's very common. And it's also common that emotional display is only accepted if you're happy or... Or if you're grieving or yeah. if you're, you know... You, or you got, you know, someone a, died and, that, yes. and then you're grieving. Yeah. Like, it can't be some past experience that you've had or yeah. things like that. A lot of times that's almost viewed as self-absorbent, you know, like... Absorbed, yeah. Self-absorbed yeah. sort of behaviour. Well, but the irony is that I think that, a, like, certain people that we meet... Mm who then, you know, we who talk about... Who, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we talk about the fact that there's these past issues to, to deal with. Mm. Very often in avoidance of, they, them. of them, but sort of focus on them, they become very self-absorbed. Yes. And that's not healthy either. And they're no longer absorbed with being loving or truthful. No. Even with themselves. Yeah. They're just absorbed of justifying all of these emotions yeah. and, uh, and engaging conversation that justifies them. Uh, yes, and making a big deal of being harmed mm. as an excuse to then give up love and truth and like all yeah. these sort of mm. um, miss... Uh, I can't even call it a misinterpretation of what we no. teach because it's just so far from what we teach. Yeah. But it's it's an injured way of dealing with emotion and and trying yeah. to use God's truth and to, to sort of live in a facade that you're doing something yeah. when you're not. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big yeah. it's a big it's a it's a, lar a large amount of it's to do with the facade. Yeah. We like yeah. humans just ha on earth have an incredible uh, myriad of ways that we use to avoid emotion, don't we? Yeah, of course, spirits do too. But yeah. but because they're more emotionally attuned mm. it's harder yeah it's harder for as he, as as Stuart pointed out harder to deny his emotions in his spirit form than it was when he was on mm. earth and when we went through that step by step comparison yeah which we could have uh, done more deep in more detail about we just didn't have the time by the end but yeah um, if we, when you go through this step by step comparison of what you did in the spirit world but what you would have done when you're on yeah. earth, yeah it's a very interesting comparison because you know the primal fears kick in and the lack of faith that you have in a spirit world and God and, and, and other things kick in as and well. And you garner support from those people around you and, and you have less sort of awareness of and the if, condition of the people around you. And it's not support, you pressure, you yeah. know, like you get pressured. Yeah. Uh, into, yeah. Into Your environment well. has a big plot to yeah. play. So, so, yeah, but as you said, lots of things we discussed there, yeah. lots of different uh, principles we discussed there and, uh, it was uh, very good to have a good, sort of a, a good, decent discussion, actually. Mm. Because, uh, as you said, there were times when I thought he might leave the conversation. Um, not, not, uh, not that he wouldn't have come back, because I yeah. think he would have. Yeah. But, uh, but there were times when the emotions were getting pretty intense for him. And, and usually at that stage, a spirit like him would have left the conversation. Yeah. I, yeah. Look, I felt um, that he tried really, really hard to do... To, for want of a better way of saying it, to do better this time, you know. To do good, yeah. Yeah, to do good. Mm -hmm. He, um, and it was interesting to feel, because obviously when I do mediumship, it's a lot about feeling. I'm not hearing voices. Mm. I, I, it's, it's um, and as we've discussed privately, sometimes I feel like it could almost be trans-channeling, because I know with Constance, the first time we spoke with her, it's it's almost like she wanted to overtake me and she could have, mm. and, and I think... Um, just talking to others, my language and demeanour changed, but it, I get a little bit overwhelmed by that, mm, you know, and I, mm. I can feel where I'm holding that back a little bit. But, mm. but I, I often um, know spirits by their feelings, not their names, mm. and, and I mm. feel their messages mm. and words just come as a result of mm. that. And it was interesting to feel a difference in Stuart, like the first time, and sorry, Stu, he almost felt a little bit pompous and there's a lot of facade and... Um, you know, properness yeah, well, about they, him. As he said, as he said himself, there there was a feeling of arrogance there. That yeah, yeah, he, he, which comes from the bad treatment, of course, that he had. But yeah, mm. and then this time he felt like <coughs> there's a lot more of a real quality yeah. to him. You know, and I felt his sincere desire to, okay, I've seen this about myself. He still wasn't real cool about being emotional in front of other people. Yeah, but, but the enthusiasm even there was growing as well by yeah. the end. Like the enthusiasm to investigate things that he hadn't investigated before. You could see initially there was fear about it, but over the course of our conversation we discussed some of those particular fears and 
so by the end of it he he was he felt pretty like happy to and desirous to uh, to actually investigate some things that he hadn't investigated for and see what the outcome might be you know that, yeah yeah and that and it was good to feel that passion yeah the the passion that he already had for science but now he had a passion to be personally involved in it yeah which was which is really good. yeah because mm. the first time he was very much like i'm removed from the from it all yes I, it? I had pictures of him behind the glass like <laughs> yeah. he actually said in yeah. the end behind glass windows yeah. observing people's behavior without the people knowing yeah which in a way is i find that a bit you know um i don't know that that kind of things that scientists do while you know i understand why they do it because mm -hmm. it, you know they feel that if they if people know they're there they might act differently which is yeah. probably true yeah unfortunately yeah um and that's why they do it but it does sort of feel like a bit like big brother looking over the shoulder yeah. type thing and you're not yeah. knowing but yeah. um but yeah he was he was yeah he was pretty honest about everything after that and yeah no was. I'm, it, was, it was a very good discussion i enjoyed it very much that's good yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you you did well with the channeling of, of it too. I thought because you you could feel his demeanour and his right. attitudes yeah. and his feelings being suppressed and <laughs> could you, yeah, yeah, everything yeah. Uh, was yeah. was pretty well reflected based on what I could feel from the man himself and and so that was that was good too. I thought yeah, yeah. that's good. I yeah. I, I want to do my best to to help their presence be known. Yeah, yeah. and I feel that's uh, something for mediums to bear in mind is that. You, you real to to honor the conversation you've really got to honor what they feel what they think what you know what what's going on for them rather than you know, like putting all this personal inflection into everything T totally and, uh, i see a lot of mediums that you know while what they're saying the words are close to an accurate reflection of what words are being transmitted to them mm. Um, the demeanor and everything is under tight, strict control, so you don't get the whole, the whole package. You don't mm. get, you don't get to feel the person. Uh, that's mm. that's interesting, isn't it? So, so that's the medium's own uh, feelings about being emotional, being expressive. Um, yeah. And then I think there's another thing that can happen with mediumship is where the medium's own emotions are triggered by mm -hmm. what the spirit is expressing and mm. they allow that to overtake the mediumship and even at times um and many mediums end also. up saying things that they that because so there's what i've noticed when i've observed yep. other mediums at times is that they start to receive a message from someone yep uh that they have beliefs about about it yes they have beliefs about either the event that's occurred or how the person should be feeling, or how they want the person on earth who's listening to feel. Personal opinions and uh, beliefs. Yep, and yep. they start to have an emotional process mm -hmm. that that then starts to impact on the quality of what is being, the accuracy, I should say, of what is being conveyed. Definitely. And you, I can often feel that happen in when I observe, I mean, oh, hang on, now it's just the medium's emotions, you know, yeah. And and yeah, I feel like that's a prob that's an ethical problem. It is. It's, yeah. a, it's an ethical problem, an emotional one. Yeah. But also, it's um, you know, many of them also revert then to a running commentary about the yeah. uh, about what's being said. Yeah. And spirits find that very annoying. Yeah. Like <laughs> very annoying. If you're yeah. a spirit trying to talk to somebody through a medium, and then the medium begins this running commentary yeah. about what's being said. And often misinterpreting what you're saying yeah. to the person. Yeah. yeah. A lot of times, as a spirit, you just throw your hands up in the air and say, yeah, "Oh, I've heard enough of this," yeah. and then there's, then you just leave the medium yeah. saying whatever they want to the person. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that, it's frequent that that happens, mm. and uh, it's an unfortunate uh, effect of the medium's condition. It is. Mm. There's probably a third thing that I think can happen in mediumship that I know that I I have um, done at times as well is where so um this is for mediums who are a bit more open emotionally but still not really focused on the service to the spirit so so for if we use the example of constance mm. um so when she came she had the first time and if anyone hasn't seen that uh there's a couple of channelings from constance done in march 2017 but mm -hmm. uh, just for context but you know, um, uh, 
when she came first, she'd had a very difficult life, but she was very angry about it. Now, for me as a medium, her, her, a lot of her life experiences, I have specific memories that are somewhat similar, similar mm. you know, and um, I could have just lost it and had a big cry then, mm -hmm. you know, basically. Mm -hmm. But Connie wasn't crying and I wanted to convey she was angry. her message. She was angry, yes. actually, yeah. She was angry mm -hmm. and I wanted to give her the service of getting the assistance. Yeah. But what happened after the channeling, the, both of the channelings with her, I just then took myself off and had a cry for, for what I needed to cry about for myself, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So it, I allowed it to trigger my emotions but I didn't allow those emotions that I had to overtake the purpose, which was to mm. complete the mediumship. Mm. But I do see that mediums, and I know I've done that in the past. I know I've just got lost in my own emotions because they've just come up and then mm. it's just, mm. it, the, the, you're not doing the spirit justice. Even if you continue saying what they're trying to say, it becomes a confused mess. Yeah, you're no longer feeling the emotional integrity from the spirit there's a mixture of emotions coming, one from the spirit, uh, one set of emotions from yeah. the spirit, one set of emotions from the channeler, the yeah. medium, and then what's being said could be quite easily misinterpreted as, yeah. like, who is it coming from? Yeah. Like, frequently it's interpreted as coming from the spirit when yeah. sometimes it's actually coming from the person. Yeah. And, uh, and this is where it gets a bit muddy for many people when they're channeling as well, yeah. once they allow emotion. Yeah. So, so all of those things are good, good lessons for for mediums for mediums to to look at as well. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's similar to what Stuart said, isn't it? Where he said, "What do you say? The quality of my uh, oh, I can't remember. The quality of my science is dependent upon my ability to analyze myself. And it's almost like with mediumship, the quality of my mediumship is dependent on my willingness to be humble and analyze and yourself, analyze myself." and want to give the gift of service to the spirit at and the same time. it's very rare to find a medium who wants to analyse themselves. <laughs> this is my experience. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's a very important lesson for every science, for anything yeah. you do. It, it, the quality of what you do is going to very much depend upon your ability to accurately analyse yourself. Yeah. And unfortunately, not many people on earth are very good at it. Yeah. And even as you can see with our discussion with Stuart, many spirits are not good at it until they get to the third, fourth, fifth sphere, or even some, some in the sixth are still not good at it. Um, so, you know, it's very difficult then to see, well, is this accurate information that we're getting now? Or yeah. is this because the person hasn't analysed themselves enough to give us more accurate to information? More mm. And, uh, you know, I felt that um, Stuart is probably in the third sphere now. What do you think? You know, I feel his condition actually had improved. Yeah, it'd be very close if not making yeah. the transformation. The difference yeah. in the third sphere is that usually it's easier to enter it when you've received some of God's love. Mm. So if he's not in the third sphere by now, uh, he will be soon. He right? will be soon because yeah. he's going to experiment with yeah. with the connection with God, and that's going to help him yeah. uh, rapidly make that transition. Yeah. And and you might find the next time we talk to him, he's not just in the third sphere. He might be, be more, more advanced again. Yeah. Um, because once he once he realises the benefits to the science around it, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he'll probably be more personally engaged it and that, that will help progress be more rapid. And, uh, uh, and you don't really have a concept of time in the spirit world. Mm. It's about what happens, how much happens. And you could see from him, he, he felt like it was only two weeks ago. Wow, because a lot more had happened yeah. than what had happened to him before then yeah. uh, over similar periods of time. So. So, you know, the way you see things in spirit world, it's not about, it's not about, and time is not about what, uh, you know, ticking of a clock. It's, it's about what happened and what how changed. much got fitted in, if you yeah. like, to that duration. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's highly likely he'll be in a, a lot better developed condition depending on how he goes with his experiments. Yeah. I feel really grateful to him for coming back and having Yeah, no, it's a very good. I think a lot of pay, our listeners would have probably found it informative. Um, I hope so. Yeah. In a lot of different ways, you know, because mm. there's a lot of different subjects we discussed. He, you know, even the discussion that we had about, you know, comparing spirit bodies and, mm. and the condition of spirit body and how it affects the physical body and the blockage of emotion and disease and other principles you know there's a lot of principles in what we discussed yeah. um that people if they hadn't heard those principles before 
could go back over some of our material and listen to that um, to, to understand fully those particular principles. But you could see with him, because he investigated it a lot, mm -hmm. he understood a lot of the, co the correlation between the spirit body condition yeah and the earth-based condition yeah, yeah it was almost like well, of course you know like of course you like that's well established but you know what else is there uh it's funny how yeah and i i, I frustrated him a bit because i was trying to um give more explanation to the people who are listening <laughs> yeah. so hopefully it's benefited you guys yeah. who are listening but but in my endeavour to do that, he felt like he was getting slowed down a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and as a result of that, got a little frustrated at times about, mm. you know, that interruption, I suppose you could yeah. call it. But yeah, yeah. yeah. but, uh, you know, what we're trying to do here is, you know, help, help our spirit friends while at the same time help our, our listeners. listeners and friends on earth yeah. <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was very good channeling. I enjoyed that a lot, and hopefully our, our pe people who are listening to the channel um, enjoyed it too. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>